All right. Uh, so I guess now you understand what the plan was. Absolutely. At Colts Law, we talk Indianapolis Colts football. We're going to stick to what we know, fundamentals and technique, 1% better every day. What's going on, Colts Nation? I'm Lawrence Owen. With me, as usual, is Loyalist, and today we're going to be talking about that one thing the Colts haven't had to worry about since the Ryan Grigson days, right? Mm -hmm. The offensive line. And uh, here's the thing, okay? A lot of people want to, first off, there's a lot of people out there going, oh my goodness, we let Reed go, we let Glowinski go, we're not re-signing Fisher, we have no left tackle, we're using rookies and guys with no... Guys, we have three pro bowlers on our offensive line, two of which are all pros. I mean, we got a damn good foundation right there, right? We just got to mm-hmm. find some pieces to plug and play. Now, I get that left tackle's important, especially when you got a pocket quarterback like Matt Ryan and you know, but I I think we're going to, I think overall we'll be okay, but we're going to discuss a few things. First off, both of our right guards from last year, our starter and our backup sign with teams. Uh, First off, Pretty sure Glowinski went to the Giants. Yes, sir. Giants. And and then then Reed went to the Vikings. Vikings. Yes. Yeah. Just signed with the Vikings yesterday or day before or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, obviously, Eric Fisher's not in the picture. And uh, Truett, co- uh, Truett come in here. Per- first off, John Davis, what's going on? Truett Tressler, appreciate you being in here. Says, uh, I heard they might try to re-sign Fisher again. Now, at the beginning of the year, uh, Chris Ballard was pretty adamant about moving on from Fisher. Uh, I don't know uh, any kind of... I haven't heard or seen anything saying that, you know, otherwise to this point. Mm-hmm. And, Neither have I. And I, I do understand that he was very bullish in his press conference at the Combine about giving Matt Pryor that starting position, or at least the first go at the starting position at left tackle. Uh, What are your initial thoughts there, Loyalist, about the Colts' offensive line heading into the 2022 NFL season? Well, like you started off with saying, the thing that is, I wouldn't say frustrated, it's just like, I love the depth that we had, and and man, did we need it last year, you know what I mean? So it's, and, and I like the quality of the player it was, you know, Glowinski. And, and I seen what he made and stuff. I'm not sure exactly what Chris Reed signed on yet or on the contract. But, I mean, the thing is, is I was hoping to get at least one of those two guys. You know what I mean? I was leaning more towards Reed because he was younger. But there again, you know, I still <laughs> – let's remember, this is the same guy that pulled Matt Ryan out of a hat. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to sit here and, and get my – Stuff all in a uproar about it, you know, and stuff. Yeah, that, this is sort of how we thought it would play. One of them would resign and then maybe bring somebody else in. But I mean, let's, you know, you got Penter that can play guard. You got Prize that got some snap, very limited, but mostly through training camp and stuff. You remember they were moving them all up and down the right side of that line and stuff. So, and then, and there's some future reserves people. But like I said, I'm more of the mind whenever stuff like this happens. Ballard knows how important that O-line is. I mean, that's that's the core of everything that this team's been built. And I can't imagine bringing Matt Ryan in and saying, okay, now we're going to give you a, a suspect uh, O-line. So, like I said, I, I don't know how it's going to happen yet. I just sort of have the belief that, you know, Ballard is definitely going to find the solutions. The thing is, is it just seemed – it was nice having that being something you didn't have to worry about. If you could get one of those guys – automatically like you said you got three pro bowls you've got matt Pryor that's that did well you know through his limited play last year and then you had you know whoever you brought in at the right guard it was like okay we're comfortable now now it's getting a little hot under the collar as far as the o-line goes oh yeah definitely the depth right now is going to be tested seriously now i i don't think that uh chris ballard is done signing depth at free agency uh, across this offensive line. I mean, like I said, 
we currently have three guys uh, that need to fill spots. Now, he'll probably draft a guy or two uh, as well, probably mid to late rounds. That's where he likes to go after these guys, and they seem to work out, right? Uh, the, the Pinters and and, and, and and Fries and stuff like that. He does well across the offensive line, but I, I would not be surprised if he at least gets one more guy uh, in free agency, not necessarily right away. Uh, just somebody really, maybe to push uh, Pryor a little bit at the tackle, that would be a good situation. Um, I just looked it up. Uh, Chris Reed, it's a two-year contract. Uh, they don't know what the actual numbers on that contract right. are yet. So, uh, but hey, two years, that means that they got a little bit of faith in him. It's not just a one-year prove-itself thing. So, you know, good for him. Um, I really, you brought it up earlier. The depth was used. All of it. All 10 guys across the offensive line depth were used last season. And some of those guys we don't want back. We have turnstiles that were at the left tackle. We do not want back, right? Um, I don't. Yeah, that's want... not the type of competition we want to be no. giving Matt Pryor because it's basically saying, here's a starting job. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But going lower now because – um, Wyatt Law does bring up a good point in the in the chat, and thank you so much for coming in. Hey guys, if you're here, I see 22 of you in the first seven minutes. Appreciate that so much. Please smash that like button, hit subscribe if you're not subscribed, and tag that notification bell so that you're notified next time we go live or upload a video, much like the Marlon Mack video that we just uploaded uh, earlier today. And you could also share this to your favorite social media. It helps us out a ton. Thank you so much. But he brings up a good point. The money invested along the O-line probably was a factor, and that really is. You think about how much money they've given uh, Ryan Kelly and Braden Smith already, and now we know Quentin Nelson is going to take not this bag, but all the bags as yeah. he walks in uh, walks into his uh, extension uh, this year. So we know this, and so they're probably trying to get a little bit on the the – I'm not going to pay a ton of money for the left tackle and the and the and the right guard situation, which I I, I get it because you're going to need that money elsewhere. You know, yeah. you're going to need to to pick up or at least look like some kind of semblance of getting you know some other playmakers on the offense. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, let's just remember how strong Ballard is at his job and stuff. And I, I'd like to Jaguar ENT sits there and says. Uh, Ballard's going to get us killed with his moves. And I know he's trying to be funny about the goals, but he said, going to get us killed in the Jags. And that's right. You know, Ballard's going to pull this thing together and we're still going to have a quality O-line. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Shout out to Hermit Crab. Appreciate you so much for dropping the five bucks in the tip jar. Appreciate that so, so much. That will be used uh, to continue to bring good content to you guys quality content and hopefully upgrade the content as we move along into this new season um i'm a little worried like we said you know depth was used last year we got to get depth this year i knew we could tell you and i when we went to training camp last year we were like that dude's gonna suck that dude's gonna suck that dude's gonna suck this guy He's getting trained by Quentin Nelson, so he might be okay. Uh, you know, stuff like that. We, we sat there, and so this season, when training camp comes along, I fully expect us to do the same thing we did last year, right? We're going to go into mm-hmm. training camp, kind of get an eye on things, and bring that information to you. So make sure, like I said, make sure you're subscribed and notified because, you know, when that stuff uh, hits, we are going to be there. Uh, Zen Edwards says that the loss of Reed is rough, and... Yes and no. Reed was a powerhouse in the run game. I will give him that big time. He was very good in the run game, uh, more so than what Glowinski was. Glowinski was actually better uh, in his last year with the Indianapolis Colts in pass protection than the majority of the other guys on the offensive line, a.k.a. uh, Mr. Braden Smith, who was sitting beside him. Okay, And that was after Braden Smith got paid the bag. You know, fifteen million a year. Come on now, uh, don't don't do that to us. 
<laughs> don't get paid. Be like, okay, it's all I'm done now. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not. I'm not gonna be like that on him because let's, let's, he had foot injury just like everybody yeah. else on the offense. Everybody on the offense had a foot injury at one point or another, and then of course COVID hit and everybody had that for a while, and then you know the whole. Off- when you're an offensive line, you're a family, and when a family member loses a child, it affects everybody. So that there was that situation as well with Ryan Kelly. Still, I hope uh, uh, Kelly and his wife are doing well right now. And uh, I'm sorry for bringing it up, but it just happened to be poignant at the time. Yeah. Uh, so we've already had streams about was there anybody in free agency that we'd go after? Right yeah, uh, yeah. On, across the offensive line, and there's a couple. I just I don't see Ballard spending more than six million dollars on a tackle, and that's that's the thing. Like we we talked about it earlier. I don't see I see him drafting a tackle and a guard. That's what I see him doing, and using mm-hmm. you know mid it. Now a tackle could be a situation where it could be in the second round if a really good one drops. Right, uh, at that point, I'd be okay with that. I'd be absolutely okay with that because then we can get a wide receiver or something in the third. The the offensive line and the wide receiver has a lot of depth this year in the draft. So if we could use the first two picks that we have and get those two positions and they hit, that'd be fan freaking tastic. Okay, yeah. at least that's that's my thought. Yeah, and, and honestly, the biggest thing I'm thinking is, you know, I hope Ballard, I hope this is Ballard has a plan. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously with Matt Ryan, you know, Ballard was like, okay, this Carson Wentz trade's too good to pass up. And then Matt Ryan just sort of evolved into an option later on. You know, is that this sort of situation with the guard position? Or is this something where, like we said, the Colts are extraordinary about scanning you know scanning all these teams and stuff and knowing what they've got in the second and third spots and if that's some talent that they would bring in for competition you know early on well i mean the colts have been incredibly deep at the interior guard and center mm-hmm. position uh since ballard's been here period mm-hmm. uh very very good at getting those guys and I don't think they have a lot of worry at the guard. Yeah, I get it. I understand. We're going to have a rookie, whether it's Fries, whether it's Pen- or not a rookie, but a young guy who is not quite 100% proven, like yeah. a Fries or a Pinter or someone like that uh, playing guard. But that's that's fine by me. Um, I actually have a lot of faith in the O-line coach uh, and the talent evaluators when it comes to that interior. They have proven themselves where, you know, when we have, you know, starters and backups being picked up by other teams, that's got to say something, right? That's exactly right. That's what I was getting ready to say because you, you sat there and you talked about the O-line coach, you know. Yeah, I mean, Strasser is a beast. I, I'm not trying to take it away. But then you sit there and you look at, you know, you got Mawai as, as, you know, the assistant O-line coach. And, I mean, <laughs> he's just a Hall of Famer. You know, and we talked about it, you know, having that correlation of being a guy that's, you know, that's been there, done that in the league and stuff. So, like you said, these guys are coming, whether we get somebody off of waivers or whether we get somebody through the draft. I mean, these guys are going to be able to, to really educate them and fast track them and make them, you know, maybe serviceable parts if need be. Or like I said, Penter. I mean, hopefully, you know, Ryan Kelly stays healthy all year. Penter there at the guard. You know, that's not bad because we got to see him there a little bit last year and especially during the training camp and stuff. And, and the young man, I mean, I'm not knocking him at center, but I like him at guard a lot better than I do center. And that says a lot. Well, I mean, Pinter was set back a little bit last year as well with that, you know, ankle injury that he had. Mm -hmm. Uh, Remember we had, we watched him walking around in a boot right beside, you know, Quentin Nelson. And we're like, this does not look good (laughs) for this team guys. Uh, We we got to quit with these injuries. And that's, that's Mm -hmm. one thing that we really need to discuss is the injuries, right, uh, coming mm-hmm. up for the this upcoming season. I don't know why, but the Colts, w- when they go into training camp, it's like some kind of whistle goes off and everybody gets hurt. Everybody. <laughs> it's like, bling, okay, time to have your injury. Now, 
Don't get me wrong. I'd rather them have injury four weeks before preseason starts than yeah. week two, you know, or week 15, you know. <laughs> so uh, that, and, that's better than nothing. Yeah, and I know a lot of these were freakish, you know, bones that have just jarred loose randomly and all that other stuff. But, you know, another thing is, is I think that maybe the OTA, maybe it helps people put them in the right mindset and get on phase better. And maybe, you know, maybe that's what some of it, you know, these guys weren't ramping it up adequately enough. So then whenever they did hit training camp, it was full throttle. You know, I mean, you remember we were like, wow, this is training camp. And these guys were really banging strong. I mean, they did went shells and stuff, but when they went full pads, it was legitimate. So, you know, that could probably help with uh, having OTAs this year. Shreyless does bring up a good point. He says, I could see the injuries in training camp because bodies are just getting back into the physical conditioning and, and you know, uh, the high impact that they're they're going through. Yeah. I, I get that, Shreyless. And that's that why makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and that's why I was saying with the OTAs, hopefully that'll help put them more on schedule, more focused this year. John Davis comes in and says, uh, with all the foot injuries, would hiring a podiatrist add to the cap? <laughs> well, we, we would try, but except, unfortunately, the podiatrist the Colts use happens to be the form, you know, the, the elite surgeon for this thing because he did amazing getting these guys back. Early. Oh, my goodness, right? It's like he just decided, <laughs> oh, screw it. You know, we'll just cut it off right here at the ankle, put on... You know, a mechanical thing, you're good to go, right? <laughs> give, it, give it three days and a few aspirins. And <laughs> right, right. But training camp, you know, uh, you you start off with no pads and then uh, just to get warmed up that first couple days and then you go and go shells and then you go full pads, you know. So they, they and, kind and, of and they just work sprinkle it around. Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Speaking of... OTAs and the early situation, the uh, Indianapolis Colts uh, season, uh, like they're going to be getting together here this month. That's going to be awesome. You know, starting the season off early. Uh, Can't wait to see some of the videos about because I'm almost 100% sure that Matt Ryan, when he calls up the wide receivers and tight ends and running backs, go throwing around, he's not going to be sending me a ticket to go out there and be like, what's up? So, uh, I'm waiting just like everybody else. Now, if he does, ha ha, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I am getting some autographs, but I don't, yes, I don't sir. think that's going to happen. Um, <laughs> Hey guys, I just want to shout out, let you know, today is my son's 17th birthday. Tomorrow I turn old. So, uh, this is my son's birthday today. Tomorrow is my birthday. So, yeah, I'm still here throwing out uh, <laughs> content for you guys in the midst of all this. My son is actually at work on his birthday trying to make up some money, all right, so that he could he could buy a video or no, an, uh, an expansion on a game that he wants really bad. So, you know, this is this is awesome. Um, awesome. Great weekend for you. Though. I mean, especially the fact that it fell on a Saturday and a Sunday. Right, right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I want to shout out a couple other guys. Joe B., what's going on? Appreciate you being here. Jaguars in here. Drunken Masters in here. Uh, that's awesome. Appreciate all of you. Please don't forget to smash that like button, hit subscribe. If you're not subscribed, tag that notification bell. Uh, so, I think we pretty much kind of initially covered pretty well what we were talking about, what the title of the video is. So we're going to get into the live chat in a little bit, uh, right after I drop some kind of an ad uh, somewhere. I don't know which one yet. I got to choose. Let's see here. I got a list of a whole bunch of them. Some of them I'm going to probably end up dropping out, uh, but not all of them, obviously. Let's let's go check out the backroom collection because, Yeah. Every time I looked over there and I see Defoe, Defoe he's screaming at me. <laughs> Go use the backroom collection. Okay, day. <laughs> this channel is proudly sponsored by the Backroom Collection. They do beautiful sports canvas art with football, basketball, baseball, and other sports themes. Special orders are accepted and autograph pieces are available. Many Indianapolis Colts sign pieces will be available beginning in November. Just use your discount code CL10 to purchase the pieces you want to spice up your living area. That's CL10. 
What's up, Speed Maverick and Toxic? Appreciate you being in here. Um, Toxic uh, joined us Thursday on our uh, Patreon live stream. And we actually saw his comments and we actually interacted with him, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, <laughs> loyalist there giving the bad look. <laughs> Guilt is charged. <laughs> but I had you, I got you now, Toxic. <laughs> I made sure I didn't set every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely guys don't forget uh, I do have a Patreon and I do drop Patreon specific stuff a lot of extra stuff with the Patreon the link is in the description of the video if you ever want to join it's only 5 bucks a month it don't cost much at all um, alright let's let's talk uh, there was a guy that a lot of Colts fans wanted yeah, and he got traded to the New England Patriots for a third round pick what are your thoughts on that? Did you wasn't want it, the 29 year old wide receiver for yeah, a third? Wasn't it like a fifth and then they got a third or something like that the following year? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, at first, you know, I seen that it was, uh, Rappaport put it out, you know, that, uh, he went to the Patriots for a late round. And I was like, man, see, why couldn't the Colts have done that? You know, that nice experience, you know, good feet. And then I, I, I waited and then seen the, the full breakdown of it and stuff. I was like, oh, okay. You know, and, and just in the draft capital alone, I, I, I don't. Why would you want to give up a third round pick next year? I just, you know, I'm, when I'm when a, there's when there's really good wide receivers that you could pick up in the third round that'll be 21, 22 years old. You know, yeah. not twenty nine and going to cost you ten, nine million dollars. Yeah. Now, now I, I understand if he was twenty six, and. You know, he was still producing a thousand yards a season and ten touchdowns. Then, yeah, I understand dropping a second or a third round pick on him. Mm-hmm. I get that. But at, at, at his age, and you know, the obvious can we can we put his drop in production though on the fact that it's been Tua throwing it to him? You know, yeah, that's like I said. I, I like the route running and stuff, but you know, there's just so many question marks with that. And and honestly, if it had been just that fifth round draft pick, you know what I mean? I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, I would have, I would have kicked the tires on that. But like you said, even there, you know, you're you're looking at generally that's where Ballard likes to get his O line. You know, and we're saying, hey, we need some O line depth here and stuff. So, you know, uh, that's a good that's a good spot where you start getting those traits guys and stuff. And I'd rather find a a traits guy for the guard than I would a, a left tackle. And that's also uh, a position where Ballard likes to trade back. You know, fourth, fifth round, third, fourth, fifth round picks. He'll drop, he'll trade back in the third round. Uh, you know, still get a third round pick, but then get an additional fifth or something like that. That's what he does. Yep. And you know, you can't do that trade if you don't have that pick available to do it with. Yeah. So, yeah, um, that's oh my goodness. Uh, Oh, Drunken Master says my son is also 17. He's got a 19-year-old daughter. Awesome. I have a 22-year-old daughter. So, well, we're all here. Uh, <laughs> we all have children. Well, those of us that are old enough to have them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> mine, mine, are, mine are disowning me right now as we speak. So, it's, it's a work in progress. So, I'll let you know on, on that one in a couple weeks. <laughs> all right. All right. Um. Man, we, we got to make... See, the, the only issue that I have with this is I, I, I do like the three starters we currently have on the offensive line. Mm-hmm. But when you bring in a 36-year-old Matt Ryan and you have Jonathan Taylor there, your offensive line is the backbone of your offense, right? Yeah. I don't like taking chances. And you kind of are taking chances when you're like, all right, this second-year guy who got very limited snaps is playing starter. Uh, uh, Two guys, very limited snaps, playing starter on the offensive line. That's taking chances. It worries me a little bit, you know, because it's not like you could just run out and get an upgrade replacement you know, uh, in 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 the you know, the beginning of the season when you're like, oh crap, what did I just get myself into, right? I mean, not, not that the the uh, 
Matt Pryor's of the world don't always happen. Okay, uh, it's just it's the truth. You know, right. usually you end up with a Sam Tebby instead. Okay, uh, <laughs> just saying. But, yeah, it, it wasn't like this was his rookie year. I mean, he was mm-hmm. he was bouncing around through the league. And, you know, and whether it was the right fit or whether I mean, but like you said, it does show a lot of you know what Ballard thinks and and the organization thinks about Pryor. And the thing is, is is this sort of reallocating funds? You know, we've talked about it repeatedly. How much resources do you need tied into this O line and stuff? You know, and you need to maybe shave a little bit at that guard spot or whatever to maybe give a little extra. You know, whether it's to a wide receiver or whether it's to a tight end or, or you know, in the secondary help. You know, so I just I'm waiting patiently to see what Ballard does because he always seems to find. You know, what I mean, he always you know. And, and the thing is, is, and here's the crazy thing is, you know, he may come up with a couple people you know, bring him on the roster and you don't even realize it because it sort of goes under the radar as a, you know, as a, oh, he's another journeyman and also, but all of a sudden because of the way, like I said, the way the Colts scour the league and, and, and get, get a good understanding of who these players are through the draft process, but then afterwards watching them and stuff. I just, I got to believe that Ballard's going to be able to find a solid enough piece, you know, and fortunately we don't have Aaron Donald to worry about this year until, you know, the Super Bowl or whatever, but. Yeah, we'll wait and see on that one. (laughs) Well, that is true, but we do have uh, a defensive tackle we really do have to worry about, and that he's he's on the Titans, and he's he's a beast. Okay, and that's Mm -hmm. Simmons. So yeah, uh, we we, uh, we gotta gotta pay attention to that situation. But again, (laughs) the Indianapolis Colts offensive line, I I don't think it's just about talent. I think you talk you kind of touched on it earlier about fit right mm-hmm. uh it's it scheme fit sometimes will help a player be better than what he is where he was prior you think about mark glowinski he started off he was over on the seattle seahawks the seahawks was an awful offensive line and he was cut from yeah. the seahawks offensive line right yeah. and then ballard picks him up he becomes a uh, you know uh, a, a good starter for the Colts. Was he a absolute fantastic top of the line all pro guard? No, but he wasn't. He wasn't so to speak ass. He was. No. He, he started <laughs> off a little shaky and got better each year. You know, as he got through the system and, and and got better. And last year he was the most consistent offensive lineman on our on on our team. You know, when yeah. it comes to starting every game and and playing. You know, at the same level from game in, game out. And so, you know, you're looking for those kind of signings from Chris Ballard this offseason, I think. Yeah, I, and like you said, I just, you look at Reed, okay? And, and I'm not trying to dump on Reed because I'll be I'll be the first to admit that I was like, man, we really want Reed. Back. Matter of mm-hmm. fact, whenever I seen the, the tweet, I sent it, and then I put, man, this one hurts a little bit. Mm-hmm. But let's remember. Reed was given the opportunity to, to start, you know, a couple games last year and wasn't able to hold on to that starting job. You know, Glow came back in. And, and so, like I said, I'm not dumping on Reed, but maybe maybe they saw something, in, you know, in practice or something when we didn't have access to it that they were like, yeah, that's not quite what we're looking for yet. And maybe that was what that was. Let's see if this is our long-term answer. And they saw something they didn't like. So now they realize, a la Carson Wentz, you know, we've got to go and keep looking and keep turning over stones until we find the right guy. Or, I mean, like you said, we don't know what the the contract was for Reed. You know, maybe it was like eight, nine million dollars a year. That's a little bit for an uh, guard, you know, average starter. Uh, Glowinski got paid six million a year average, you know, and that's Mm -hmm. that's fine. I think he more than made up for that that salary uh for the indianapolis colts we need another guy like that um and when it comes to prior though i get it i understand where they're coming from with prior but if he don't work out yeah we're in a bad spot yeah, really bad spot because I can't tell you any other tackle right now that would fill left tackle well on this team, well enough to go out there and be like, all right, I'm comfortable him protecting Matt Ryan's blind side. You know, uh, if he gets hurt, 
or if he, you know, just doesn't turn out well. You know, let's say he got what a game of starting, you know, prior to that was that was it at the left tackle position. At the yeah. left tackle position, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's not like you had an extended view of the situation, and you know, the the, the question was who was he going up against on every snap? You know, was it it was it Chandler Jones? <laughs> well, was it yeah? <clears throat> was it Yannick? Well, I mean, he's going up against Yannick every snap in, in training camp and preseason now in practice. Right. So they will, we will get a good view at prior. You yeah. know, I will guarantee that. Absolutely. See, and that's the thing, you know, I mean, I, here's my biggest concern. Okay. And, but this is also what sort of puts me at ease also, because you, I, you don't bring Matt Ryan in here. Okay. And like I said, yes, if he has to run, he can. But you don't want to put him in a position where he has to scramble around a lot, okay? He's more of a let me find that little soft spot in the pocket kind of guy. He's not the guy you want to be rolling out a ton of times. He's not the guy that you want to sit there and, you know, put him in that Carson Wentz and, and more use more of the mobile side, you know? So like I said, and Ballard knows that. He knows what, you know, Matt Ryan is and stuff. So I just don't see him putting – not only the left tackle at risk, but then somebody up the middle, because I mean, let's be honest, if you have a weak spot at at one of those, okay, you can compensate. But if you've got a weak spot on the edge and up the middle, I mean, that's, that's just a game breaker for Matt Ryan, you know, no knock to him. Like I said, I just, I don't want to put him in that position, not considering that he's our guy for not one, but two years. (laughs) Right. All right, we're going to get into the chat now. It's been 32 minutes in. we got 40 viewers. Appreciate each and every one of you. Please take that moment and smash that like button. It helps with analytics. Gets us out there a lot better. If you can't afford uh, to support us by using the donation link right here in the description of the video, hitting the like is a huge help. We appreciate every, every everything you guys do for us. Jaguar ENT says, so do you guys think we can really get to the Super Bowl with a rookie wide receiver tight end and tackle? Or do we keep looking for the future? You always keep looking for the future. Okay, he says he's uncertain. Obviously, I'm uncertain as well. Uh, But the first thing to do is win your division. Okay, that's the thing. And I think that the Colts have the talent right now to match up with the Titans for the division. We were close last year. We were close the year before. I think we're in a better situation quarterback-wise Right now, as good as we've been since Andrew Luck retired, okay? I I really believe that. That Matt Ryan, even at his age, is the best quarterback we've had on our team since then. Um, Could we use a little bit of extra weapons at the wide receiver position? Absolutely. We need another tight end. Uh, Not necessarily because I think that uh, our current talent isn't going to work out because I think Granson showed chances last year, showed, you know, improvement as the season went along. And I think Mo Alley Cox, uh, not just as a blocker, but, you know, his skill will really shine through with Matt Ryan because, you know, uh, he had almost a breakout season with Phillip Rivers. Yeah. And Ryan's more of a similar style player as Rivers is. So I, I, I think that, you know, but we generally carry three tight ends. We need to get a third tight end. Yeah. Um, Frosty Warrior asked in here, he says, wait a minute, how many offensive line have we lost this in free agency? Right now, Reed and Glowinski, so we lost one starting guard and a backup guard. Okay, but then now we've got the left tackle who, you know, it's not looking like, you know, he's Fisher's coming back. So right now to free agency, we've just lost a starter and a backup. Uh, Shreyless, Chris Reed signed with the Vikings. It is it is legitimately on the uh uh OTC and the uh and spot track on on contracts it's just the numbers the numbers of the the two year contract hasn't came up yet and fisher from what i'm understanding is not coming back so that is three guys three that uh will be happen to replace and they talk about it you know ballard said this since he's been here he wants 9, 10, 11 guys on the offensive line, just like he wants 9, 10, 11 guys on the defensive line. And if that's the case, you got three or four guys you need to go get. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, 
It is mm-hmm. what it is. Uh, Migsby, what's up? Says, would you rather draft a wide receiver or offensive line with our first pick? Whichever one is BPA at that time. That's that. Uh, first off, with our first pick in the second round, if there is a first round talent offensive line that could start at the left tackle, grab him. Grab him. Mm-hmm. Uh, if there isn't, but there's a guy that you feel like could be a first round wide receiver, you know, that's sitting there, grab him. You know, uh, I would focus more on the offensive lineman on the tackle than I would the wide receiver. Uh, as in, like, you got two guys that are dead even. I would legitimately go off uh, the offensive tackle over the wide receiver because that affects two portions of the game. That affects the passing game because you're protecting Matt Ryan, and it affects, obviously, the running game and creating lanes for Jonathan Taylor and all them. So, you know, I would much rather have um, the tackle than a wide receiver. Uh, yeah. But, you know, because there's depth. You, you go get another wide receiver later on. At least that's my opinion. What are your thoughts? No, I agree. Because like you said, I mean, you just can't, like, I, I can't express to you how important it is. We've got to protect Matt Ryan. You know what I mean? We've got to make sure that that is shored up because that's what this team is built on. You know, Matt Ryan, you know, you don't expect him, but if he has to, you know, air it out quite a bit, but you've got to also give JT his his time to shine and and, and to make us that well-rounded team. You know, and I was like, uh, uh, J.B. Miller in here asking, you know, she's, she made a statement or he made a statement. Sorry about that. It, either way, uh, so just tired of Ballard, you know, not you know not using the free agency and making it harder on himself. You know, the margin for error draft extremely small in his window approach. And I, I agree with that. But in the same token, that's this team's strength is to sit there and find quality talent. And, and, and free agency is not over. You know, it's not like, oh, you know, there's no – I would argue that there's going to be a lot of activity after the draft because there's still, you know, I mean, you sit there and you look at some of the tackles, you know, there's some of the older tackles we've talked about, you know, maybe filling that, you know, left tackle spot. If it, the if they don't find it, you know, the Jason Peters and the Dwayne Browns, you know, type of players, you know what I mean? And, and guard also, you know, there's some names. It's not as – not as – accomplished you know what i mean like jason peters he's been a really top end tackle in the league for a long time the guard's not quite that way but there's still good quality depth it, so free agency is not over and like i said and ballard's always i think going to play towards the draft because that's he knows that that's where the legacy of this team is yeah, going with, to be built with jamie miller talking about you know tired of not using free agency and make it harder on himself he does use free agency mm-hmm. and uh i mean look at it this way all right, uh, he spent thirty some million dollars so far on two players. It's just they were in trades, right? Uh, and honestly, I'd rather had Yannick and Gagwe than any of the free agents, any of the pass rusher free agents that were available at the time. I would rather had Yannick because he is at that level and younger. You know, yeah. uh, he was the top dog that I wanted last year's free agency. So mm-hmm. you know, he went out and got it. He's Spending money, he's just spending it in a different way, you know. Plus, he gives the money to the guys that's available that prove themselves on the team. And yeah. I, I think that's a really good way. And if you ask anyone out there, they would rather do that if they had the ability to do that. You know, be able to build a good team and then pay those players, then go out and take a chance on getting somebody in free agency. Yeah. You know. Yeah, he doesn't want to get in a bit anymore. He doesn't want to sit there and have to pay, you know, say, you know, this is 100% of the value for the player. He doesn't want to have to pay 120% to get a guy that you hope fits the team and, and stuff. So, I, like I said, I, for agency, he likes to dabble on the the, the bat lower end of things. And he really, I mean, let's look at, you know, Danico Autry, Justin Houston, you know, like you said, Mark Lewinsky, Chris Reed last year. I mean, he's really good at finding these guys on both sides of the ball, especially in, especially interior wise. So like I said, I, I'm not, I'm not sitting there thinking that this is the end world. This is just where Ballard shines the most. So let's let him do his thing. Mike Muma says that the Colts lost Marlon Mack today. Colts lost Marlon Mack week three of last season. Okay. When Marlon Mack said, Hey, could you put me on the trade block? Okay. Technically he was signed yesterday. 
on April Fool's Day. Uh, we already posted a video on that, Mike. And if you want to go check that out after we get done here, feel free to do so. With what a 14-minute video that we did about uh, Marlon Mack and the departure and him going over to the Texans. Um, but uh, I mean, there's a reason why he was gone. Uh, we we got stupid depth, right? And he's he's legitimately, I don't think there are 32 running backs in the NFL better than Marlon Mack. So I think that he deserves to be have a starting position somewhere. And yeah. the Texans is a good spot. I don't, you know, it's it's a bad spot because he's not going to be on a winning team at least right away. Maybe in three years, because they've got a plethora of draft picks. So who knows, you know, um, how Nick Casario is going to build that team. But we'll see. Uh, but his his only competition is Royce Freeman and Rex Burkhead. Marlin's going to get that starting position, and he deserves that starting position. Yeah. Uh, White Law in here, and he's talking draft talk. He says John Mechie from Alabama, the wide receiver, you know, said that uh, he's because he's rehabbing from his ACL, he might drop to 73. And I respect the heck out of you, White Law, but if he's there at 73, the Colts just got the pick of the of the draft. I mean, I understand he's coming back, but these ACL, these kids are coming back from this thing a lot stronger. I would say if we were have any shot at Mechie, it would have to be the first pick for the Colts there at, uh, in the second round. Right. Um, I mean, it, it is possible. Uh, I mean, we've seen guys drop, you know, uh, due to injury, right? Yeah. But let's – like Hooker dropped, right, to what, 15, yeah. 16, uh, something like yeah. that? And he should have been a top 10 pick, but he was, you know, an injury. So – but then that injury – kept following him through his NFL career. So, you know, that's something you got to look at too. I don't want someone walking in at wide receiver that already has injury history because let's face it, our team has plenty of wide receivers on it that have had injury history since they've yeah. been on the Colts. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't leave it at just wide receivers. I mean, you know, <laughs> right. we were the we were the uh, Achilles brigade last year, remember? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, all right. I have to cough. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, my goodness. I, actually, my throat's starting to go a little dry, and yeah. I'm kind of getting a little rough. Uh been talking a lot the last few days. So, But I appreciate all you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, we're about – we're pushing 45 minutes right now, so – um, we do okay. have, we do have speedsters on the team at wide receiver, Joby, uh, Joey, we, we do have, a, but the one is completely and utterly unproven and the other one has injury history. Yeah. I want speed, but I, I'll be honest. I want, I want route runner. I want somebody who can sit there and create their own separation and, and give Matt Ryan a little bit bigger window. Cause I mean, Matt Ryan can hit those tight window shots. I don't, I'm not denying that. But you've got MPJ, who's going to be able to go up over most people and stuff, and and get his receptions that way. You know, you got Moali Cox, big guy. But I want to have somebody like you know, like Ty has been for so long. You know, I mean, sit there and, and use his use his acceleration and use his route running to be able to get that separation. I think we need an absolute stud at the slot receiver position, someone who's going to get open quick on little. Uh, quick slant routes, uh, little jabs, uh, digs, things of that nature. Something that Matt Ryan, with the question marks at the offensive line position already because of the left tackle and the right guard. Something that he could just take the snap, turn, look, pass, get rid of it quickly. You know, yeah. someone. Now, are we going to get a Debo Samuel? Probably not. Are we going to get a Cooper Cup? Probably not. You know, but that type of re someone who, who yeah. is. Not necessarily got ridiculous top end forty speed, but someone who has very good athleticism in that, like the three cone or something like that. That you know that when they make that cut, they're going to create that separation right away and give Matt Ryan that. Like number twenty one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Naheem Hines checks off a lot of those boxes. That's just what these headphones are telling me. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and 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 it'd be nice. 
Yeah. I'd like to see Naheem get out there and get some more yeah. get some more plays. Uh, and, and I think Harris Campbell would be a nice change. I mean, if he can stay healthy, you know, put him in there and him and Naheem. That that's a double. Naheem's got good speed and, and like you said, he's really shifty and stuff. Whereas Paris Campbell, he can do that, but he can also just blow the doors off, you, you know, from the jump. So, like I said, you sit there and you can interchange those pieces. Man, that's a that's a rough day for a slot cornerback. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, all right, guys, if you haven't looked at my Matt Ryan film room, make sure you go check that out as well. Uh, he can still make all the throws, all of them. Okay. Uh, does he have Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen arm strength? No, he never did. Just like Philip Rivers, but he's got a better, stronger arm than what Philip Rivers had. I would honestly put Matt Ryan's arm strength about where Andrew Lux was in 2018. Okay, that's about where I would put it because Andrew Luck didn't have a cannon for an arm in 2018 when he retired. Or, you know that last year before he retired. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you remember when they needed the 50 yard bomb and at the end of the game, they took him out and put Brissett in, mm-hmm. right? Because he didn't have that arm strength. His arm at that point in time looks very similar to what Matt Ryan's looks right now after that sh- shoulder surgery that, that Andrew Luck had, uh, that year guys. Yeah. And, they, and, and, mm-hmm. and looked, looked, you know, as far as throwing a football, not because I remember when Andrew Luck came back, that thing was gigantic and he was all <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he, he could, he had an issue throwing past 50 yards. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Luck did, you know? Yeah. And I think that's what all that extra mass was for was to help compensate. Mm-hmm. And, and to your point, I mean, yeah, I just, <laughs> Matt Ryan's got enough, you know, heat on the fastball when he needs it. I mean, when he if he's if, it, if, yeah, it's, if, if he's, it's inside that 15 yard line, mm-hmm. he's got enough quickness to get it inside a tight window, but you know, anything past 30, uh, he does what Rivers did, what Luck did. He, he he would throw receivers open and let them run under the ball and get it. How many times did we see Andrew Luck do that with T.Y. Hill? T.Y. Hill, right? I was just right where my brain went when you said that. Nice little arching, just boom. Yeah, exactly. You did, That's the beautiful thing about throwing deep. It's not always about getting the ball to the guy who's already open deep. It's about seeing the one-on-one coverage. And that's what Luck was really good at. That's what Rivers was really good at. And that's what Ryan is good at, is seeing the one-on-one coverage downfield and then throwing the ball to an open spot on the field, not necessarily where the receiver is actually headed at that time, and let the receiver run up underneath of it and catch it. So, guys, uh, it's been almost 50 minutes. I got to go. Uh, like I said, my throat is killing me. Uh, appreciate all of you, man. 47 of you in here. Please smash that like button. Uh, helps us out a ton. Um, and honestly, uh, we'll be back probably Tuesday or Wednesday. Cause obviously I got believe on, uh, Monday with, uh, Gerard powers. Don't know if we're going to have a guest yet or not. It might just be me and him. Um, uh, if you want to check out the Patreon, uh, the link is in the description. If you ever want to donate to the stream, you got a little extra money, we'd appreciate it. Links to the uh, tip jar is right below here in the in the uh, thing. We will shout you out, uh, even if it's while we're not streaming. Uh, it's happened plenty of times. People drop money there. We come. Is there anywhere to get like little shorter content or anything that you do, Law? Oh well, absolutely. There's this thing. That there's this there's this thing where we take little clips of what we do, plus we make clips just specifically for this platform. This video is sponsored by Newsbreak. Newsbreak is an app used over 1.5 billion times a month by people just like you to get local news via articles or videos by those who are focused on that specific area. People like myself. Just use the link in the description of this video to download it. Then search a city, state, or someone specific, like myself, Colts Law. Then make sure to follow them so you'll get all the news fresh as it comes out. Quick shout out before we go. I want to shout out again, Joe Thornburg. I hope you're doing well, and we hope uh, we see you soon. And I think that's going to be it for us, uh, loyalists. Any any final words? 
happy birthday to Young Law Dog, and happy birthday to yourself tomorrow if we don't talk. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know what we're going to be doing. I'm making fajitas tonight, so... Uh, mm. you know, what time am I coming? supposed to be there? <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Until next time, Daryl Ingram came in a little late. Cece, hey, what's going on? Appreciate you. We're getting ready to jump off here. You Feel free. Go check out the stream and hit the like button. And until next time, as usual, I'm Lawrence. Uh, that's Loyalist. And... Uh, Oh, yeah. Have a good one. Nope. We're not going to end it. Screw it. We're going to go on until next year. Just because a guy's a player's not a household name doesn't mean we can't make him a household name. Nah, Ballard, I don't have enough money to help with the free agency. You're going to have to figure this out on your own, bro. Seriously. <laughs>